Hey there, it's Miss E of Miss E's Glory Lows. I am coming to you today to share with you my experiences at the Case Western Reserve University's Black Expos. I did one in 2023, which was their first, as part of Juneteenth, and they had another one this year as part of Black History Month, which is 2024 in February. And so having done this now, within six to eight months of each other, I'm able to give a perspective and to share with you all, to encourage you all if this is something that you would like to do, but understand what all comes with it. So I did it, um, I received the invite via email to attend this event. They had a, did a broadcast of some sort and I was able to get the information. And so I responded and one of the things, now when they did it in 2023, they said it was a free event for people to come. All you had to do was register. Now they did make it a point to where if you could not attend, that you were to let them know because they had a long waiting list of people who wanted to come. So if something comes up, you have the opportunity to opt out without any penalty and someone else who need the opportunity could come. So again, this was a free thing. It was first come, first serve. They provided the tables. You just need to provide your tablecloth and of course be able to set up your product for the event. And also they were providing a workshop that you would have to attend. And this would be a business connected workshop where they would give information to you on basically how to do better business and things of that sort and then the sale of your product and everything will come after this which was about four o'clock so you no know, i think last year it was more so around maybe three o'clock because it was still around lunch time and everything so they provided lunch they provided breakfast in 2023 now the downside of it was the school was closed as far as the students were concerned because it's in the middle of the summer. But they had the staff and they were supposed to acquire the patronage of the other surrounding businesses like the hospital and other local establishments that were around. They would feel free to come in and partake and shop with, the, with our fellow vendors. Now, what ended up happening was because of this being free, Unfortunately, some people took advantage of it and they didn't even show up. People registered, didn't show up, and so there were empty tables. Now, they provided us tent cards that had our business name on them as part of this event. So that means that for all the tables that were supposed to be accounted for, they were not, they were empty. So you had a lot of empty tables of people who did not show up. And that was unfortunate because each email that came out from Case Western stated, if you cannot attend, please let us know because there's a long waiting list of people who want to attend and people still didn't do anything. So now your business name and is sitting there with no representation at all no setup, no people, which is a bad look for you and your business. And it also is a mark against you as far as any future events going forward, because why would they want to work with you if you can't even keep your word or follow the instructions that you couldn't make it and let them know and given another person who would really benefit from the opportunity not being able to come and partake. So that was, and this is kind of a selfish thing. So, so both people missed out on opportunities, both the people who didn't show up and the people who could have attended had they been able to be given the opportunity. Um, it did start real early. I think we had to be there around like somewhere between eight, nine o'clock. Um, parking was on our own, which they also allowed you to park in the parking garage, which ended up being, um, I think either 10 or $11 for the day. And when you consider how long you're going to be there for the day, for me, it made sense. You can go in there, you don't have to worry about feeding the meter or anything like that. You could just park and be done. Because again, they're giving you the opportunity to sell your product. So you'll be able to make the $10 back. They were feeding you both lunch and breakfast. So you didn't have to worry about eating. And you could purchase from other vendors while you were there as well. Um, 
And overall, everything was supportive. They brought in an outside speaker who was fabulous. She was one of the most interactive speakers that I have sat in a presentation with. She had the group really participate. She had us do this exercise that kind of got us up and making sure that we were awake and moving a little bit and it was very interactive she had us using our phones to google stuff because she was giving us information and she didn't want us to just take her word for it she wanted for us to actually look at the information up for ourselves and so that was great and then of course they had a couple of other speakers from case western to speak to not only why the event was happening but um working with their to procurement department um, which is about doing the marketing and everything and and working with as a vendor what would be involved if you were to try to work with them or any other procurement department at a bigger location facility organization just telling us what to, the do's and don'ts and things that you should be aware of because a lot of people just don't know what's all involved they think you can just go to one person and things will happen when in fact they're actually tiers and different levels of people who you have to go through and work with so you had that and which was all great they gave you information what to do how to do where to go find the information which was great at the end of the day you end up getting new sales of your products in front of different people because it was a lot of staff that was on site from the university a lot of them were coming around and taking information and stuff so they could consider you as a vendor for when they have different events going forward, which is great. That's a great opportunity for marketing, advertising, interact, talk with a lot of people, which was great. And they also talked about diversity, both working with people and then who you choose to work with as a vendor. You know, when you go to the store, those kind of things, different things to take note of and be mindful of as a shopper when it comes to diversity, minorities, working with different businesses, those kind of things, which was great. Things to think about that you probably wouldn't normally do unless you're in that area. 2024 was a slightly different experience, which I can understand why. Um, this time they decided to charge everyone a $25 fee to attend. That would hold your spot. That would give you as they would call skin in the game, so that you would be more prompt to attend and not just throw away money, at least we hope. And this time like I said it was during Black History Month, so that made it good. And now all the students are on site this time as well. So they're free to come in and partake and shop when it's time, which that time was 4.30. Now, compared to 2023, this event started later in the day. It started closer to noon. And then we'd had, they provided us lunch, which also happened to be from a local small business who had recently acquired, because he had acquired his MBE, Minority Business Enterprise Certification, he was able to provide the lunch that we partook for the event. And this time they had, um, again, some Case Western Reserve faculty to speak on their procurement, their processing, um, how they choose vendors and things of that sort. And this time they brought in some local business or organizations to speak with us to help us directly with our business. So they brought in the Urban League of Greater Cleveland and the President's Council. And they explained what they do, how they do, and why they do it. And here it is, they provide a lot of free services for entrepreneurs to help them to be better in business, especially in reference to the minority business enterprise certification. They actually help walk you through the process so that you can get certified. And along with the women's business and um, I think it's Edge is the other one. So you get these certifications, they help you get through it, which is great. Now, as a result of them charging $25, this was covering the parking. So you got a parking pass so you can get out. And it also was supposed to, you know, covered as the um, the meal. So you got your meal and your parking, which again was fine. Now keep in mind, most of this stuff was funded by the university. So for them, this isn't necessarily a 
financially beneficial event that they put on, but it's to give back and to put in because they have funding for it. So they go to give it to us. So the whole ideal is to make sure that we as business owners, entrepreneurs, however you want to classify yourself, the opportunity to really get another leg up. And they answered a lot of questions that people tend to have as far as the availability for these other organizations. Like, how can I work with you if I'm working during the day? And that's usually when the classes are and things of that sort. Well, they have hours that they work around and they have a by appointment so that you can do. So they help to minimize your excuses for not being able to get things done. So if you really want to get done and get these certifications, get better business opportunities and things of that sort, you're being encouraged on more than one level to get in and do such. So I feel like it was a great opportunity, um, but just like with any other event, I still say make sure that this is the type of event that would truly benefit you and your business. Yes, the information can definitely benefit you, but now if not whether or not your business would profit from being set up at the university is questionable. Because just like anything else, you have to know if this is your target market, you know, so you do your research to know, okay, are students going to be buying this or are you gear more towards the staff? You know, are they all going to be there and participate? Are they going to be willing to spend the money? You know, are you interacting? Because all the same rules still apply as any other vending event. This is just a different setup, a different venue, but everything else is still the same. So... I had a lot of repeat customers because they remember me and then I still got more new ones because they didn't know before or because it's a different time and they did different marketing techniques this time to gather other people. So either way, it was still a win-win. So I appreciate it. And then even for us bakers who have food and those who have food, they allowed for us to, they had a different level of criteria this time to make sure we had different things in order, which had us to step up our game as well. So if we didn't have, say, like a food handler certification, if we didn't have our business insurance, if we didn't have workman's comp, things of that sort, all those different things, they were taken into account this time and they were asking for proof and documentation. So if you don't have these things in order, this was an opportunity for you to step your game up. Because again, once you complete these different things, it allows you to have more opportunities. So even if it's not with them, it can allow you for other things from other places. Now, one of the things that Case Western wanted versus something that I had in particular was having a brick and mortar. For them, you either need a brick and mortar or you work out of a different certified kitchen, not necessarily out of your home, but say like a church or something like that, which I get. And for if I if this was the only thing that I did, which it's not, but I could see how that would be beneficial and I could take the opportunity to do so. But that's not my primary thing that I'm interested in doing at this time because of the other things that I do and have in mind to do. So, but it's definitely something to consider when it comes to something like that. But I am going to complete and get my MBE certification because that opens a lot of more opportunities for businesses because it gives you a leg up on contracts that you work with or get the opportunity to even bid on and take part in. It can offer to you first because of that certification versus if you didn't. So I said all of that to say, <laughs> I said all to say, if you can get your things together, you can be afforded different opportunities like this one to not only go once, but then be invited back because the impression that you make also connects to you being invited back and you get to meet a lot of other different vendors and stuff some repeat some new some new to business in general so it's a great thing and if you still need some assistance i do have my book are you sure that you're ready a guide for vendors that helps you to know when event an event is for you how to field it for yourself and give you other tips and ideas on how to do and how to be successful when you do your events. Because I get a lot of questions and this book provides a lot of the questions. Now, if you want to set up a consultation, feel free to do so. You can reach out to me. Um, the book is available on Amazon and anywhere else fine books are sold. Um, I can send you the link if you want. I'll put the link in the bio. 
um, or in this, the bottom in the description of the video. And yeah, so I just wanted to make sure I shared it. This has been a long time coming, so I'm glad I was able to do it on time this year, but even give a comparative as to my experience before. So I would look forward to doing it again should they have it. In the meantime, between time, I will continue to do my other events. You will see me post and be around both this city and probably outside of it going forward. And yeah. So thanks again, stopping through. Hopefully this information helps you, give you some things to consider going forward. And until next time.